Welcome back to the Crochet Crowded Source by friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the Nautical Stripe Crochet Pillows. This is using Bernat Maker Outdoor Yarn which is yarn that you can leave outside on a beautiful sunny day and you can use your pillows and you can see that it's got buttons there so you can remove the, the pillow form if you'd like to. Also I have what I've done is I've used Bernat Maker Home Deck Yarn which is not an outdoor yarn but I've decided to try that instead because A I had it in and I also changed my hook to a six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook which changed the 16 inch pillow into a 12 inch pillow so it became a lot more compact. I like this pattern. It's actually really quite easy to work with and I'm gonna be showing you the stitch work and some tips and everything to do. Also you can do two things. You can either have the flap on the top but if you like to end it a little bit earlier and just sew it all into position which I will probably do because I will use mine on indoors. That's completely up to you and of course the creativity is always up to you I guess at the end of the day. So this pillow is done as a circular in a complete circle going around and around and the trick to this one in here is that when you get all the way around you have to reverse uh, chain up and turn and go the other direction. So you go around one direction and then you go back in the other direction and round. It's like almost like a typewriter and you're doing that so that all of this stitch work that you see. See how it's perfectly lined up? You can see that's forming. So if you start to see that one of these kind of went astray and it's not sitting on top of the other just perfectly then you know that you might have missed a stitch along the way. I have to tell you I kind of did that a couple times myself so I did end up frogging a little bit. But you can see that no matter how I turn it it's going to look great in any way. So where the slip stitch is is right here. See it's barely noticeable well, at least to me and so when you go to fold this and you're ready to sew the bottom you wanna leave it on an edge just like this and so you have a perfect front face and a perfect back face and then you slide your pillow in between. So this is that really neat concept and um, I'm gonna show you some tips today in order to uh, make sure that you are watching for that to go straight up and this is really quite an easy pattern. I'm also gonna show you how to do the flap if you'd like to do that and also they're recommending some buttons. So I have one inch buttons here made from wood. I picked it up at the craft show and so you can use something like that to accent it and if you don't wanna use a flap at all and you wanna um, sew it shut that's completely up to you. You have to make a, ju a judgment on what you think is best for you. So let's begin. You're gonna use your Bernat Maker Outdoor Yarn and an L size eight millimeter crochet hook if you would like to follow the pattern as is. If you'd like to substitute like I did a six and a half millimeter size K and Bernat Maker Home Deck Yarn works fabulously. So either way you're, you're pretty much covered and it's really awesome. The self striping that you do see in the photograph can only be done with the Bernat uh, maker outdoor yarn uh, stripes that's uh, recommended as well. So let's create a slip knot to begin and it says to chain uh, 72. If you're gonna change anything in the sizing so um, don't email me and ask me if I change the size what will it be like a chain count I really don't know. I just know that I followed the instructions with a smaller hook and it gave me a 12 inch size pillow. So you're just gonna chain uh, to 72. The trick is is to keep it as an even number if you are gonna change the size. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So that's an even number. So if you were, you're gonna go all the way to 72 so you can do that now and then meet me back here in just a moment and I'll show you what to do next. So I'm just doing a small sample with you and you're gonna notice that your chain feels like it's really long because it will be but because you're working in a continuous circle is that you are just going to put and uh, without twisting your chain at all you're just gonna put the first chain or the first um, um, chain onto the uh, hook and pull through and through and then that will complete your round chain. So it obviously be much bigger. So let's say begin round number one and as soon as you understand this it gets a lot easier to understand. So you're gonna chain always two to start. Okay no matter which direction you're going to be going into so it's nice and easy to remember. And in the next chain you are going to slip stitch. Then the next chain will be a half double crochet. So the chaining two counted as a half double crochet. I should have said that but I didn't. So then the next chain is a slip stitch and you're gonna keep doing that all the way around. So you'll have either a half double crochet or a slip stitch and the trick is is you gotta make sure you keep an eye on those and I found with myself when I started doing these kind of ideas is that you, you have to constantly think it's slip stitch half double crochet. I found my mind just starts doing it automatically and it's kinda hard to switch back to a regular project um, after um, you do something like this because you're doing it naturally. The very last stitch when you get around should be a slip stitch. 
Okay, so if you're keeping in count and it's even and when you do that make sure that the, this is not twisted up in any way and you are just going to slip stitch to the top of the first chain two. So the trick to this pattern, so it's not twisted in any weird way, so it obviously be much bigger. So the trick to this is that you turn it first and then chain up two always and then that's your first stitch and you go immediately to the next one and you slip stitch. And then what's the next stitch? It's gonna be a half double crochet. And then the next is a slip. And you're going to see this line, see how it turns, uh, looks like it's sideways. You're gonna see that starting to form and then that's what you're gonna be using to make sure that you're following it up straight up and making sure it doesn't go around, uh, crazy. One thing I would do, recommend it and I did it because I kept having a frog a little bit because I was not paying attention so carefully because the TV was too good, is that just turn it around and look at the back side of the stitches to make sure that you are doing um, everything right. If you're gonna do it wrong you'll notice it on the back side and then you can just frog a little bit instead of noticing it at the end. Once you get all the way back around the last stitch will always be a half double crochet or sorry a slip stitch and then you are just going to whoops you know what I still have a half and a slip left. So the last one will always be a slip stitch and then you will um, slip stitch to the top of the first chain two. And then after you've done that turn it again. So you don't keep going in round and round and round you have to keep turning. So chain two is your first one and then your first stitch is the next one and that's a slip and then a half double crochet is next. And you're gonna keep doing that until you get to a certain size and you will find that it will work out really quite awesome and you're gonna start seeing it now after a couple uh, revolutions. Do you see how it's kinda that line's kinda coming across? If I flip it you'll see it as well and when I take the other project here you can see See those lines? That's what you're gonna be seeing happening. So if you flip it and see the inside you also see those on the other side of it as well. So what I want you to do is that you need to go back and forth and you need to complete this until it's about 16 inches tall. Now if you were doing a 12 inch pillow just like you see you wanna do it so it's a 12 inch. So um, just have to take a tape measure and just measure across and what I decided to do just because I was improvising is that I measured across here and then I stopped when the same dimension was here because then I know it's square. Again that's up to you. So once you get to the size that you're recommending, they're recommending to do a flap and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my yarn back into place and I'm gonna show you how that flap is done next. So let's begin to do the flap. So the flap is exactly half of your blind, uh, of your pillow. So no matter what size you make it, it said that it was 36 um, stitches across. How many stitches were there total? There was 72 so therefore it's half. So you wanna fold it in a way that you can see the slip stitch is down the one side. And I'm now, and I'm still turning it back and forth now. So when I finished um, I was going across and now I'm turning back going in the other direction to keep it looking the same. So to start this one now we're gonna work in the rows and we're going to chain two as always and then you're going to slip stitch into the next stitch. It's exactly what you already know and then you're going to half double crochet and slip and then half and what you want to do is that you wanna go all the way across then to the halfway point and then stop, turn and then chain two and then slip and then half double crochet and slip and etc. And you wanna do that for a total of um, four rows. So you're gonna start your beginning row, you're gonna do your second row and then two more times just to keep it going and then there's your flap. Then on the last row what you're going to do is that you are going to um, just make some single crochet loops. So in your last row it says that you can do um, your, your loops, your buttonhole loops. So there's a total of four of them and you're gonna sew your buttons onto the actual good project on the other side of it once you get the flap going. So to do the particular um, loops it says single crochet in the first five. So you just uh, switch over so when you start the next uh, flap area you're just gonna single crochet like five across to start and then once you're ready for the first loop you're going to chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven and it says to slip stitch in the first chain of the grouping of seven. So just coming in the first chain slip stitch 
and then come to the next stitch and you are just going to um, single crochet in the next seven. So, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then do that again. So chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then just slip stitch to the first one of the grouping of seven. And there's your next loop and then single crochet in the next. So you're just gonna do that all the way across and therefore you end up with these loop holes and your button should be able to get through that loop just so you know so that you can take it out and this flap will then go over. So on the other side once you have your flap done um, you wanna fold it over and you wanna sew your buttons on exactly where it's going to hold it in a position. So you just wanna be conscientious of that. You wanna keep it nice and tight but not too crazy and then you have a, a, pro a project that you can remove. Once you have everything established then you can just grab your pillow form. So let me just zoom out a little bit and you can see the mess here in the studio and you're gonna grab your pillow form and you're going to put it on the inside of your, your form. And then all you're just going to do, the bottom section you're going to whip stitch it here. Okay, we have videos on whip stitching if you're interested in that. And then all this, because you have the flap done and as soon as you have your buttons then sewn on you can just put the flap over and put the loops onto the buttons and then that's secured. So you can always remove this pillow form if you need to. So it's a really neat idea. I think it's a really kind of a fabulous idea. I like little pillows like this. Great for accents, uh, for um, solo chairs and etc. without having to take up all that cushion space that's kind of invaluable. So without further ado I hope that you've enjoyed today's tutorial. It's a nice quick one. It's really easy. Just watch your rows going up and down and you'll find that this is probably maybe a two hour or so project. It's that easy and quick. Have a good day. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.